five things to consider before building your very first Plex media server. This video is brought to you by a number of people who email me that ask me what my recommendations would be before they start to build their Plex media server. So I blame you guys for this video. As always, this video is brought to you by Plex as part of a monthly Plex sponsorship. So thank you Plex very much for sponsoring my channel. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. First of all, yes, I blame you for this video, but I also kind of sort of apologize because I just don't have the time to respond to everybody's single needs. And there are so many variables when it comes to building your first Plex media server that it's hard to give one set answer. I mean, you can spend thousands of dollars on your Plex media server, or you can spend hundreds of dollars on your Plex media server. It really just kind of depends on what your needs are. So these are five different things that you should consider before you build your first Plex media server. The first thing that I think that you should consider when building a new server is your primary SSD. Now I'm not talking about your operating system SSD, although it could be shared with that. Instead, I am talking about the SSD that you are going to be installing Plex to, and thus having all of your metadata stored to said SSD. In my particular setup, I have Unraid running off of a flash drive, and I have one SSD dedicated solely just to Plex metadata. Now, what is metadata? Metadata is not the actual videos that you store. So let's say, for example, back to the future.mkv, right? That is a video file. That is your media content. Plex metadata stores things like previews of thumbnails, the titles and the descriptions to each movie and or TV shows. The metadata holds a whole bunch of stuff and it really does need to be stored on an SSD for the best performance out of your Plex server. So I consider this to be one of the first things that you should think about when building the Plex media server because it is extremely easy to underestimate your Plex needs. If you go full bore setting up your Plex and you you want all of the goodies, things like the scrubbing through thumbnails that Plex can automatically generate. Things like these take up a ton of space. The, the thumbnails, the poster arts, the background images, all of that is stored on your Plex media data folder. So if you're somebody who plans on having, I don't know, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, thousand movies on your Plex media server and you buy an 80 or 120, you know, gigabyte SSD, you're gonna have a bad time. I'm just throwing that out here. And while I don't actually disclose how big my media collection is, I will say that my Plex SSD is about 280 gigabytes. That's just the data itself, not the size of the SSD. I actually have a 500 gig SSD in there, but I've had to upgrade that SSD from an old 250 because I ran out of space. So if you buy something too small, you can quickly outgrow it. Next thing you know, you're spending more money to get a bigger SSD, and then you have a tiny SSD left over. It's not necessarily a bad thing because extra SSDs are always a great thing to have. I'm just throwing that out there. And along this lines, if you want to run Plex off of an SSD, I definitely recommend an NVMe drive. NVMe drives normally have considerably better IOPS and throughput. So if you wanted just to get a little bit better speed out of your Plex media server, having an advanced NVMe drive is definitely going to help you accomplish that goal. This one is one that I found randomly. It's a 970 Pro 512 gigabyte. So this really would be great for my needs and I would imagine it'd be just fine for yours as well. Actually, where did this thing come from? I have no idea. Anyway, number two, mass storage slash operating system because they kind of both tie in together. The way I look at it is this. You have three main options and there's a ton of options out there for a Plex media server, but I'm breaking it down to the very root three primary options that you can consider when setting up your Plex media server. Each one of these options are going to come with their own different storage, you know, pros and cons. So the first step, the easiest step and the most common starting ground to a lot of people who are just getting into this 
Microsoft Windows. I started out with Microsoft Windows. In fact, I started out with Microsoft Windows with a JBOD setup. JBOD is just a bunch of disks. That's literally, I had like drive A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, like I had all these drives and it was a terrible setup, but for the longest time it worked because you know, I was broke and I was just kind of adding drives as I could. And then I'd add another portion of the library and you know, it is what it is. Sure, you can set up software RAID in Windows. It's definitely an option. If you have the drives to do that, then hey, more power to you. Setting up a Windows Plex media server is probably one of the simplest things you can do. You don't have to focus on permissions. You can just assign a drive. Windows makes building RAIDs easy. I mean, it is definitely a very simple thing to do. But at the end of the day, you're gonna take a huge performance hit, not only on probably the performance of your hard drive speed themselves, but also the overhead that you're going to be using just running Windows. Plus software updates can be a pain in the butt. That's a whole nother story. My second option and my personal favorite, Unraid. Now Unraid offers kind of a unique experience when it comes to hard drive storage expansion. Unraid is exactly what it sounds like. It is the opposite of a RAID, aka Unraid. Now with Unraid, you're essentially taking the concept of JBOD, where ju just a bunch of disk, and you're giving it a spare parity drive to kind of sort of just say, hey, what should be on one of these drives if it fails? The benefit here is that if you're starting on a budget, you can afford one or two really nice drives and you want to start your Unraid array, then you can easily expand it as you go. This is what I did because I could not afford to throw in 30 hard drives all at once. Instead, I went through a period of like shucking Western digital external drives and adding storage as the need arose. Or later on when the addiction got real and I just wanted to hit 30 drives and then I kind of sort of bought stuff that I didn't need and maxed out cards and then whatever, that doesn't matter. The point is you can expand it and Unraid is still very easy to use. Yes, it can be complicated, but for the most part it is one of the simplest low power, although you do kind of have to pay for it, operating systems that you could run for a Plex media server. The only thing you have to know about this is that with Unraid, it inherently has a speed deficiency, meaning that because you're basically running JBOD setup with a little parody thing going on in the background, you're heavily limited to the read speeds of just a single drive. And write speeds can be kind of treacherous, but again, Unraid is not built for drive performance. It's built for mass flexible storage, which works perfectly if you are only focusing on a Plex server. Now, the third option is a little bit more technical and you're probably gonna have to go to YouTube or Reddit or whatever source that you want to, to find some information on how to complete the task of setting up and actually getting a functional Plex media server to work correctly. And that is TrueNAS, previously known as FreeNAS. I have a little bit of experience with FreeNAS in the past, but I fell in love with Unraid, so really my experience with TrueNAS or FreeNAS is non-existent. However, TrueNAS takes advantage of the ZFS file system. You can run ZFS2, ZFS1, etc., and it performs way faster than what Unraid can do in terms of storage. The only downside here is that if you do want to set up a TrueNAS server and you want to build your array, depending on what you're trying to do, you really have to be able to afford all the drives to put into that server all at the same time, or eh, all of the drives that you're gonna put in a single storage pool. Yes, you can add more storage pools and you can basically have multiple locations to store files, which you know can actually give you a little bit more data security. But at the end of the day, if you just want one massive storage pool that has all of your drives all at the same time, you gotta have them all at the same time. But with TrueNAS, you do get a better performing array, which means you can read and write data to that array extremely fast, especially compared to an Unraid server. If you go that route, I hope you know what you're doing and or I hope you know how to Google things that you don't. Number trace, or for you Spanish impaired, three. The form factor of your new Plex media server could be of major consideration for any kind of future expandability. What I mean by that is that if you buy a case specifically to hold something like five or 10 hard drives or whatever it is you think you might need and you wanna expand later on down the line, it's gonna go right back to the whole argument with the SSD. Meaning that if you run out of space, you're gonna to have to run out and buy a new case to expand your array. So for example, things like Unraid can handle up to 30 hard drives in a single array. But if you only have something that can hold 10 drives 
and you want to take advantage of that 11 slot, you're either going to have to get really creative or just buy something new. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, everybody loves spare parts hanging around their house, especially if they could recycle it for other builds. But if you're on a budget and you want to kind of plan for the future, maybe dropping that extra 30 or $40 is going to help you from having an expensive headache in the future. Now, there are a few cases out there that allows you to have that standing up form factor where they look really cool and they can hold a ton of hard drives. But if you really want to get the best bang for your buck, you might want to consider some recycled enterprise class storage chassis. You can get on eBay and usually get these from anywhere from two, 300 bucks all the way up to, you know, thousands of dollars, but they usually handle anywhere from 24 to 36 to 48 different hard drive slots. And usually those are hot swappable, meaning you can just pull it right out of an active server, swap the drive and stick it back in without ever having to take down your computer or take anything apart. So to me, form factor is definitely an important thing to consider before building your Plex Media server. Do you want to limit yourself to what you can fit in it now? Or do you want some room for growth? Numero quattro, AKA four, that is performance. How much performance do you really need? Now, if you're somebody like me and you, you have a bigger budget and you're like, you know what? I want the biggest, baddest thing I could possibly afford and throw into a server, then hey, this doesn't really matter to you. However, if you're considering what you actually need to run your server to hit your needs with a little bit of growth in the future, then you might not want to overspend on hardware that you literally would not use more than like 10% of. Yes, you could absolutely go out and buy a three or $400 Quadro card, a P2000 that can handle, you know, 20, what, eight streams if you have the right hardware to back it up. But if you really sit and think about it, are you going to be transcoding 28 streams at the same time? I mean, really. Personally, I only use anywhere between two to five streams all at the same time. So 28 streams, although I could do much more with what I have in there now, I, I, I just don't use it. So the first thing you're really gonna wanna focus on is your CPU, specifically one that has built-in graphics. So if you go with something like an Intel chip that has Intel Quick Sync or HD graphics built into it, you're already gonna be able to use hardware accelerated transcoding and you could have a CPU that could literally give you 10 or 15 transcoded streams at the same time without breaking much of a sweat. So you got you, you got your parents, you got your brothers, you got your cousins, you got your friends. What are you like five, six, seven, eight different streams at the same time on a CPU that's really barely flexing itself and you never even had to buy a graphics card. That's a win. If you're trying to turn yourself into your own Netflix, then yeah, sure, go balls to the wall, spend all the money you want to, that's fine. But if you're just looking for something that's gonna give you good performance, be able to skip through videos without any kind of major delay and transcode four or five streams, seriously, a basic CPU with any kind of built-in graphics will probably get you by just fine. Now, if you wanna check up on this, the best thing to do is look at pass mark scores. So let's say you wanna look at an old X99-5960X. You look at the pass mark score Scores. For every 2000 pass mark score that you have, you can easily get a stream out of that CPU. So focus on your CPU first, because if it's not enough, you can always add a GPU later and you don't have to replace anything in your system. It's just a matter of adding to what you already have. And number five, last on the list, but definitely something that I always focus on, and that is a UPS backup battery. That means an uninterruptible power source because no matter what operating system you have, no matter what setup you're using, if you're in the middle of doing something and you lose power, your server goes down, you always run the risk of corrupting your data. This could be the actual media that you're trying to play, which is extremely rare, but hey, it's still possible, or the Plex database, the Plex metadata, things like that. These can be corrupt your power goes out, all of a sudden, Plex won't work. Your SSD's messed up, your storage is messed up, everything is just hitting the fan, and you don't know what to do. Why? Because you lost power at the worst possible time, and now you gotta rebuild all of your software side of your Plex media server. So even if you get a small UPS that would be able to only power your server for maybe five or 10 minutes, it could still save you hours of time 
rebuilding your Plex Media server internally just because you didn't have any way to back up your power. I personally have used CyberPower backup UPSs for a very long time. I've used anything from the very small ones that really are just five, 10 minute running all the way up to the very large ones that I have in my rack mount that can power it for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Or, you know, if you're rich, you can get a Tesla Powerwall, but hey, I, I'm not rich, so you know, more power to you if you can. And even though I said five, I just had something come to mind when it comes to live TV. Uh, so, you know, not six, but hey, honorable mention, consider what you want for local TV programming. If you wanna watch things like local news, maybe locally broadcasted sports, you might wanna consider getting an external TV antenna with an HD home run TV tuner. That allows you to tune in, add live TV and a DVR functionality to your Plex media server. I guess, this you know video could be called top six things, but you know six is just not as catchy as five for some reason. Well, that's it for today, guys. If you have your own special considerations that you feel are important, make sure to leave those in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day. Seriously, I don't know what this was used in. I mean, it's a 970 Pro. This is a good SSD. I feel like I could use this in something but I don't know what. <sighs> on the other hand, 500 gigs for any kind of real world uses, like on a main workstation, for example, kind of limited.